What's up, everybody? This is Greg with Delta Financial, and this is the Be The Difference podcast. This podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and we bring on guest speakers. Today, I have the honor and pleasure of welcoming two individuals, two fantastic individuals, John and Mark Cronin. Gentlemen, how are you? We are. I'm pretty good, Craig. Um, I really appreciate you being here. We are. Yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on. Very excited. This is great. This is gonna be. This is gonna be great. This is gonna be a fantastic episode. And for for those of you that don't know anything about John or Mark, what I'm gonna do is kind of introduce them. John and Mark Cronin are the father son team that created John's Crazy Socks, a social enterprise with a mission to spread happiness. They bootstrapped their business into the world's largest sock store, earning them recognition as entrepreneur years, uh, entrepreneurs of the year. John is not only an entrepreneur, but he has also has Down syndrome. Every day, John and Mark show what people with different abilities can do. More than half of their colleagues have a differing ability. They are fierce advocates for the rights of people with differing abilities, having testified twice before U.S. Congress, spoken at the United Nations, and recorded two TEDx talks. That's amazing. They are members of the CEO Commission in, on Dis Disability Employment. Their work has been featured on national broadcasts by CBS, ABC, CNBC, PBS, and the BBC and Fox News. They have built a business based on creating customer experiences and spreading happiness. John's Crazy Socks has 240,000 Facebook followers and over 30,000 five-star reviews. John and Mark show their gratitude th uh, through their giving back program that has raised over $550,000 for their charity partners. And most of all, they are spreading happiness one pair of socks at a time. John, Mark, that is phenomenal. I love this. This is going to be great. Well, we're pretty fortunate to be able to do what we get to do, right, buddy? Absolutely, Dad. So, so how did this start? Let's start from the beginning. Okay, so you got to go back to the fall of 2016. Okay. And our story started in a small log cabin in the woods. No. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> it started in suburban Long Island, outside of... New York City, and, and where were you, buddy? I, I was at Huntington High School. I could be my last day of school. So okay. here's what the audience, you know, will, you know, first we should say, John is not only an entrepreneur and, and, and now a sock tycoon, uh, but you also have Down syndrome. Yes, I am. I, I have Down syndrome. Down syndrome never hold me back. Yeah, so, oh, and I love that. John is... Last year of school, uh, you could, he could stay in school till he turned 21, and he's trying to find, you know, meaningful work and couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. and, and that's an unfortunate reality for too many people. Only one in five people with a disability are employed. It's awful. Mm -hmm. But John here, I think, is like a lot of your audience, he's a natural entrepreneur. Yes, I am, Dad. You didn't see a job you wanted. What you say? I said I want to create one. I want to make one. And what'd you tell me? I told my dad I want to go into business with him and nice father and son business together. So I had started many different businesses. Um, that's pretty cool when my son comes and says, "Dad, let's go into business together." Yeah, I love uh, it. <laughs> particularly, uh, I've got three sons, and this is one I could work with. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> yes, you are. Um, so there we are, and we got to figure out what are we going to do, what type of business. And John, you had a lot of ideas. I had brilliant <clears throat> ideas. Not all of them were brilliant ideas. Not really. No. What was one of them? Well, I made a food truck. Um, I got an idea from the movie Chef and John Farrow. Yeah, that's a good movie. I, I eat a neat movie about a father and son <clears throat> bonding over a food truck. So this seemed like a lot of fun, and we're thinking, where would we put it? What would we make? Uh, but we ran into a problem. Oh, we can't cook. No, we can't cook. So it wasn't going to be a food truck. But then, right before Thanksgiving in 2016, John had his eureka moment. I did. I want to sell crazy socks. Why socks? It's fun. It's 
is fun, it's colorful, it's creative. It's always let me be me. I want creative sex of my whole life. We used to drive around looking for these things for John. So yeah. this is what we figured, Greg. If John loved them that much, surely other people would too, and we could find our tribe. Yeah. So that's, that's a powerful message right there that I want to I want to sit on for a second and, and, and marinate here. Is like you realized I like something. There's gonna be a niche market out there that also likes it, right? And it's and you have passion about it, and that's important as an entrepreneur, especially if you're trying to bootstrap a business. Is go towards what you're passionate about, even if it's something weird, right? Even if it's like, oh, I really like butterflies. So what? If you love butterflies, find a way to make butterfly jewelry or something, because there's gonna be people out there that feel the same way as you, right? Yeah, my my experience is that. If you start by saying, let me make something that everybody wants, mm -hmm. you'll get lost. Yeah. Find that thing that you, that you're really knowledgeable about, you know, or really love and passionate about. Yeah. And find the people that love that. That's where you can grow. That's where you can get started. Yes. Um, so we had that notion. And then the other thing is, you know, and you've been through this, Greg. I, I've started other businesses. I've evaluated businesses. You know, what everybody does is you stop everything and prepare the business plan. You know, do your market research, competitive analysis, your operational plan, financial forecast. They're always wrong. Um, we didn't do that. We went the lean startup route. We said, let's, let's keep this simple. Let's get something up and running and we'll test the idea. And customers will let us know if mm -hmm. we have something here. So we built a website. You know, you already had the name. Yeah, I got a name. I a website, come my ideas. We had decided we'd sell online. Yeah. So we built a website on the Shopify platform. Uh, we got a little bit of inventory. We had to control people. They didn't want to sell to us because they said, you got to show us you have customers. Well, how are we going to get customers if we don't have any inventory? Yeah. We're bootstrapping, so the only marketing we did was to set up a Facebook page, and I would take out my cell phone, and we made videos. And who do you think was in those videos? I am. I'm talking about socks. I I have I have passion myself. <laughs> uh, I I I come up a case phrase: socks, socks, and more socks. The passion. And so, we opened on what day? Uh, we opened on a Friday, a December 9th, 2016. And we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But that first day, we got what felt like a flood of orders. We got 42 orders. Um, most of them were local. We're in the town of Huntington on Long Island. Yeah. So what did we do with those first orders? I, I hope there was three freaking red boxes. I put I, 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 I suck in the box. I put, I put something out, I put in it. I put up a different you know, I wrote, and I put a, a, a candy, a, all the bags for the kids. Right, we got bags for Hershey's Kisses, poured them in, loaded up the car, and we drove around, and you knocked on doors I delivering did. socks. How the customers respond? Customers loved it. They, they took a picture with me and, uh, with me and the socks. And share it on social media. We would get that spread. We had customers ordering again just to get John to come back to their door. And there were some funny moments. Like we'd be out after 10 o'clock at night. And John's knocking on doors. Just John with your socks here. I don't see me. No. <laughs> um, so by the end of that month, really two weeks, we had shipped 452 orders and had $13,000 in revenue. And we knew we had something. We had learned a few things. One, one people wanted to buy socks. Two, people wanted to buy socks for me. They wanted to buy from John. They related to John. They liked that personal touch of the thank you note and the candy. They liked the fact we had already pledged 5% of our earnings to the Special Olympics. And for particularly the, the people in your audience who were thinking about getting started, you know, were thinking about making that leap, you learn by doing. 
So we learned that this young man. Did his old man. This old man, we could sell socks. So that's how we got started. Mm -hmm. That was a little over six years ago. Today, how many different socks do we have? We have 4,000 different kinds of socks. I enjoy this. With me, I am the world largest stock store. Right. Nobody has as much choice as us. Right, Dad. We've shipped over 410,000 packages to 88 different countries. We've been able to create 34 jobs. 22 of those are held by people with different abilities. And we've now donated over $550,000 to our charity partners. Um, and as you like to say, I should get started. Just getting started. Just getting started. I love that. That is, that's fantastic. You know, I think. I think one of the things that you guys did but is I don't know if it, you guys planned it or if it was just like a moment of genius was going through and actually having those boxes that you had the, the thank you cards, the handwritten notes, yeah. the Hershey's kisses and hand delivering those because that right there is such a level of love and care about your product and service. And, and that, I think that's the key that got you to really like kind of explode. And it's it's those inefficiencies. It's those inefficient things that you do. It took a lot of extra time, a lot of extra effort, but that's where the value is found. You have to know what you're about. Yeah. From day one, we had a simple purpose. We're going to spread happiness. That's that's what it is. And we could talk about these. We built it on five pillars. Mm. And one of those pillars is we're going to make it personal. And that was true from day one of, you know, it, it affects everything, right? So, yes, the packaging and the hand deliveries, um, it's true today. You know, I mean, here, yes, we ship around the world, around the country. But if we get an order between our office and home, what are you doing? I still do home deliveries. We're still doing home deliveries. Every package still gets that thank you note and candy. We've had some really smart people come in and say, eh, you know what? The thank you note's enough. You could save money on the candy. Well, yes, but then it's not going to be the same. Yeah. Right. That you got to. We're in it for the long haul. We're looking to build relationships, not just chase transactions. And that will sustain us, you know, it sustained us through COVID. Um, it helps you survive and it helps you build. It, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and it creates a, it creates a loyal client base that become raving fans. We're very fortunate to have very strong supporters. Yeah. Um, you know, some of, some of the things that you know, put out some numbers, we have over 30,000 five-star reviews. We have 96% of the reviews we get are five-star reviews. We hear from customers all the time. Um, we have a high email volume that comes in. It's not um, complaints. It's not returns. Our, our return rate is less than 0.5 of 1%. It's people saying, tell John I love him. You know, oh, I got my socks. My, my nephew loved the socks I got him. Uh, are, are you familiar with the net promoter score? Um, um, no, I'm not. So this is something that Bain and company came up with. They were looking for a single question that would be able to project loyalty and a company's growth. You have seen this question a gazillion times. Would you be willing to recommend this service or this product to family and friends? And the way it works, you answer on a scale of zero to 10. If you answer a nine or a 10, you're considered a promoter, somebody that's going to help that business because you're going to talk about it in a positive way. Mm. A seven or eight, you're considered a neutral. A zero to six, you're considered a detractor that you could actually hurt that business. So your net promoter score is the percentage of people that complete that one question survey. Uh, um, what percentage of those are promoters? The average net promoter score is a 30. You have to really look by industry. For uh, the cable industry, it's negative five. If you're a real good retailer, you're at 60. 
70, you're a world-class organization. One of the things that makes us feel good, our net promoter score is a 94. It's off the charts. That's a, that is unbelievable. And, and it's because you just keep knocking yourself out. And everybody gets engaged. And it affects everything you do. Right? So if you call here, you don't get voice jail. You talk to a human. Yeah. You talk to a person. There's no script. We don't listen in on phone calls. We're going to try to make you happy, right? Like you've heard the old line, the customer is always right. Mm. Nonsense. The customer can be dead wrong. But we're not in the business of being right. We're in the business of making that person happy. So we don't fight with customers. We don't argue. You got to make them happy. But that makes everybody happy. Or, or here's another example. We do our own fulfillment because we're looking to create jobs, but we also personalize the fulfillment and the packaging. So one day, one of our packers comes to us and says, you know, we sell socks for diabetics and we're sending them candy. What's wrong with that picture? Yeah. So now we have a supply of sugar-free candy that if you order diabetic socks, we're going to send you sugar-free candy. It's because everybody gets involved in saying, what can we do to pay attention? Yeah. Let's, let's create those human connections. That's pretty awesome that you guys thought to that level of, of hey, we're going to do sugar for candy for people that order diabetic socks. That's awesome. It's, and we keep coming up with ways, right? And, and we get asked often, well, what's the single most important thing? You know, what would you advise me? Well, you know, first thing I'd advise somebody is I'd kidnap John and have John as my partner if I'm starting a new business. But beyond that, I'm really not advocating people kidnap you. <laughs> yeah. But beyond that, it's belief. Like know what you're about and believe in that. Um, and then that becomes manifest in everything you do. Yeah. I thousand percent agree. It's, and it's, I like to think of it as, as faith. It's because, yeah. because it's sometimes you have to believe without any evidence. Yes. It's, it's very important to tr to get feedback from your customers. And we do surveys all the time. We, we solicit reviews, but at the end of the day, you can't determine who you are based on a poll. Mm -hmm. You have to know what you believe. And you also have to be willing to say, we're not for everybody. You know, yeah. that comes back to what we started with. So find your tribe, find your find people that believe in this. So we're price competitive, but we're not the cheapest product on the market. Um, we get phone calls sometimes. Oh, you know, I mean, these are actually quite rare, but you know, I could go to Costco and I could spend this much money and get 24 socks. Well, then you should do that. Would you like the address of your nearest Costco? You know, what? we're not, that's not our business. Yeah. Um, it's, when you believe in what you're doing, everything becomes easier, but it's also essential when you, when you get rocked. I mean, the, I could use COVID as an example. Yeah. Right. Uh, COVID was terrible for everybody. It was terrible for our business. We usually do pretty well in the spring. Um, a lot because well, World Down Syndrome Day. People conveniently celebrate that by wearing crazy socks. Um, we have a lot of events. All that got wiped out. We had six television appearances wiped out. Um, so we cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars. But lives were at stake. So what do you do when you're tossed up in the air like that? Mm -hmm. That's when it's really important to know what you're about, know what your mission is and know what your values are. Your mission becomes your North star and your values will keep you going straight. Yes. So for us, the first thing we had to do was make sure everybody was safe. May, many of our colleagues um, have a different ability, have a, a disability and they were vulnerable. I mean, mm -hmm. John here, People with Down syndrome right. were not more likely to get the virus, but if they did, they were five times more likely to be hospitalized, 10 times more likely to die. 
let's put his star. You got to yeah. take care of people. Yeah. But then you look and say, okay, how do we adjust? So we do tours of our place. We move those online. We do a lot of speaking engagements. We move those online. Guess what? That opened the world to us. So we've now had, you know, we've had over 2,000 people in person come through here. Mm -hmm. But now we've had school groups from around the world take a tour of John's Crazy Socks. Um, what do we do with our socks? Well, we made healthcare superhero socks to thank the frontline workers. And those raised over $50,000 for the American Nurses Association COVID fund. And then you look and say, well, what new opportunities fit with our mission? Well, it was an easy one. We made masks with our theme and, and uh, design techniques. But our mission is to, what's our mission? Spread happiness. So how do you spread happiness if everybody is locked down, if everybody's isolated? Well, here's one way. What do you do every Tuesday afternoon? Every Tuesday, I hold a dance party every Tuesday. We started, John started an online dance party. What more fun? Every Tuesday afternoon, the whole world is welcome. Come and join, no charge. Just have a dance party. Let's get together and dance. Um, we started a Facebook Live show. Just to connect with people a half hour, the two of us telling jokes, telling stories. Sharing what's going on, right? Absolutely. We'd get 40,000 people listening. Just spread a little joy um, because we knew what our mission is. Yeah. So at the end of the day, yes, we are the world's largest sock store. We have great socks. But we're not really a sock store. The socks become the physical manifestation for the story and the mission that we have. Yeah. That is so powerful. I love this. <clears throat> this is because it's really you you guys have tied in so many basic fundamentals when it comes to being an entrepreneur and starting a small business. And and you did it almost it seems effortlessly, just kind of uh organically, you know, uh where a lot of a lot of young entrepreneurs struggle with what what do you believe in what's your what's your company's mission and vision what's your core values how are you going to operate right something as simple as that and like setting that and and then sticking by it and like always saying like hey well how can we innovate and does it fit our core values right you know does it fit with what we're doing what's our mission what, what's our vision you know and and, and always sticking to that and providing massive massive value in everything that you do with your with your audience with your niche market everything that you're trying to do like you guys did everything the exact way that you're supposed to i mean obviously you're going to have obstacles and challenges come your way right like you talked about COVID, but um the way that you're talking about how you guys handled it and, and maneuvered through it is is phenomenal and I and, and, and it's, it's no no wonder why you know your John's Crazy Socks is so successful. Well, we're fortunate though. I we do a, every year we do a pop up a pop up shop anniversary party for our anniversary. And I was talking to somebody this year who said, "Well, you know, the hard part was getting started. Then after that, it's easy. Everything flows." And I'm looking at him thinking, I don't know what world you live in. That's not the world we live in. Yeah. And and for your audience that are thinking of taking that leap, they may not want to hear this. That's the easiest thing. Um, yeah. You know, go and get started when it's just you or, you know, in our case, just the two of us. When it's a small group and you're getting started and planning the things. Um, but... <sighs> I understand why it's challenging too. I'm, I'm lucky to have this partner who's just bold, who's okay, we're just going to go do this. Um, it lights a path. You know, here's, here's an anecdote of uh, January of 2017. We're just getting started and we find out, right? Nobody buys socks in January. Nobody buys anything in January because they spent all their money at the holidays. Yeah. So we're looking, what can we do? And that's when we discover that people celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. When, when is that? Um, I'm March 21st. They celebrate that by wearing crazy socks. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, you would have thought we knew that ahead of time, but we're not that smart. Um, and at that time, we're only selling other people's socks. So we go looking for somebody who had a Down syndrome themed sock and nobody made one. What are we going to do? Well, it's my partner who said, well, this is obvious. What do you say? I want to one. I want to make one. He says, we'll make one. You yeah. sat down and designed one and we found a mill to make it for us. Um, it really doesn't get to be that hard. It's kind of laid out in front of you. Yeah. Um, and everything we do is a hypothesis. We think it's going to work. We'll go and try it. Measure and find out. Yeah. You may be wrong. If you're never wrong, you're not trying. Go and find out. Fail fast. Tweak. Um, we, we have an aesthetic around here. We were discussing it 20 minutes ago. Um, of ready, fire, aim. Don't overthink things. Get things up and running. So here, here's a, an easy example for us. It's the summer of 2017. We've had a very strong spring, and now we're finding out nobody buys socks in the summer. What can we do? Well, we should start a Sock of the Month Club. People love subscriptions. Let's go and do that. We sit down, and within two weeks, we had designed the web pages we needed. We had gotten the inventory. We figured out the process, the pricing. We're up and running. About four months later, one of our suppliers, who's also a competitor, because they sell direct to consumers, they start a Sock of the Month Club. Okay. And I'm talking to them about it. And they said, oh, we've been working on this for a year and a half. A year and a half? What the hell were you doing? Yeah. So they were just getting started. By then, we're four months in. We were on our third iteration. But we had real revenue and real customers because we went and built it as we went along. Yeah. Here's an example literally from today. We are um, starting to sell retail to into retail through the wholesale channel. Yeah. Um, now develop a line and we're starting to do that. And I'm asking my colleagues, hey, we're sending an email out on Friday talking about how we're going to a trade show. John, John sends out a weekly email about what he's up to. Let's tell people about it. Where's the web page? Are we up with the web page at our normal site? Just telling people about our wholesale business. Well, we think it's ready to go, but you know we want to get so and so to make sure it's okay, and she's out this week. Yeah, okay. Let's get it up now. Everybody else okay with this? Because we can change it as we go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get something up and running, and then we'll learn. And so, if you go to the website now, you can see our wholesale page, and we'll be selling it into wholesale, so you can buy our products in retail stores. Nice, nice. I, man, this is great. This is so much powerful information for the audience listening. You definitely want to go back and kind of dissect a lot of the things that John and Mark are going over right now because it's phenomenal when it comes to building. And it is, this is, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, it doesn't matter what kind of entrepreneur you are. If you're working, if you're, if you're self employed and you're 1099, even as a solopreneur, these are still concepts that you can utilize to find success. So I'm, I'm loving every single bit of this conversation. This well, I, you know, you don't do it overnight. Huh? As John, as you point out to me all the time, I'm an old man, right? Okay. Yes. Lots of mistakes on things. Uh oh, but... there's my there's my signed package. Oh, okay. Sec.
Okay, where were we? Uh, we were we were talking. Now I'm forgetting. <laughs> Sorry. I think so. I was just talking about how I loved everything that we were going. Oh over. yeah. And you're thinking um, you're like, you know, it's not been easy. No, and so let me. Uh, I mean, I'll give you a, a couple of things um, that might be useful to your audience. One, you know, it's it's never an issue of are you going to have trouble? Mm -hmm. You are. It's just a matter of when and how you respond. So, you know, I'll give you some comical ones. Even the very day we were going to open, what day, what time in the morning were we going to open? Um, I, I tell him why. And what happened? The website crashed. The website crashed because our webmaster, me, screwed something up in the code. So we opened at three in the afternoon. And I told you we had a little bit of inventory. We got many more sales than we possibly expected. So by our second day, we're running out of inventory. And it's Saturday night. Where are you going to get socks on a Saturday night? Yeah. We drove to every Kmart in Suffolk County on Long Island, buying all the socks we could, just so we would have some inventory. You know, you or we put candy in every package. We started with what candy? Uh, uh, Hershey's Kisses. Hershey's Kisses. Everybody loved it. The little chocolate. You'd open the package, you could smell it. It was great. Until we hit March, and we got the email from the woman in Florida saying, you may not want to send chocolate through the mail to the south because it was melting. <laughs> you know, you're going to, we're going to have these things. Yeah. Uh, for us, you know, one, uh, you keep coming back to that purpose, you know, spreading happiness. And it's really allowing our customers to do that. You know, sign, you know, go check out Simon Sinek's Start With Why. You can find he's great you know, book, by book. the way. What do you say? Great book. Right. Phenomenal. If you don't want to, if you're not a reader, he's got a seven minute YouTube to, uh, video that does that covers it as well. Mm -hmm. And and we built the business on these five pillars. Inspiration and, and hope. Inspiration and hope. Give it back. I'm proud of you can love. Make it personal and make it a great place to work. Make it a great place to work. And that, that fifth one we added. And those drive us. And we we talk about them all the time. Everybody knows them here. And they, they affect all of our decisions. So let's make it a great place to work. This is pretty simple. If our mission is to spread happiness, we got to start here. We're going to start with our colleagues. And we've broken that down to five components. One, offer everyone a mission worthy of their commitment. Something bigger than ourselves that people can believe in. Yeah. And it can't just be, we want to make money. And, and don't get me wrong. You know, Greg, we want to make money. We like to live indoors. But that can't just be it. There's got to be something else. And then two... Make sure everybody knows why his or her job matters. There's no cog in the machinery. There's no make work job. There's no inconsequential job. Everybody needs to know how what they do fits into the mission. I've listened to friends and other businesses say, Mark, come on, that's a bunch of malarkey. How can you say everybody jobs, everybody's job matters? And I turn back to them and I say, well, if your job doesn't, why do you have them on payroll? Why are you paying them? Yeah. So you know, we run our pick and pack warehouse, our pickers. And what do we call our pickers? Sock wranglers. Sock wranglers. And they all have some different abilities, some intellectual development disability. If you ask them to a person, they will tell you right away, you know, what's my job? My job, I'm spreading happiness. And here's how I do it. I pick orders and I get them right and I get them fast. Everybody's got to know that. And then put people in a position to succeed. Don't ask people to do what they can't do. And we don't ask John to do our finances. And give them the support they need. If Nick, our webmaster, needs a tool, let's get him that tool. Mm -hmm. Now, we're a small business. We can't afford, we don't have endless resources. But you still, you know, Show people that support. Four, 
recognize what people do. So, Greg, you run a great podcast. You pay attention. You get information ahead of time. You vet your your uh, interviews. You prepare for it. When somebody says to you, hey, Greg, I listened the other day. That was really good. Doesn't that make you feel good? It does, yeah. We all love that. Sometimes it's as simple as saying thank you. Yeah. And the last piece is stay the hell out of the way. Let people do their jobs. And you roll all that up, and then people feel pretty good about themselves. Yeah. You know, it's and that leads to better work. So around here, you know, you know, we've had we've had some ups and downs. You know, it's been tough times some points. We've had some layoffs, but we don't have people leave here. We've we recently had one person leave, and I and I blame John. Um because somebody who worked with us on social media for four years, Christy, who did great work, she left to become a special education teacher and said she was inspired by John on that. But otherwise, if you take care of people, they're going to take care of you. Yeah. We spoke about making it personal and, and every way you do that. Fun products you can love cuts at two levels. One, it affects what do we sell. So it's got to spread happiness. It's got to be fun. And I got to be behind it. John's got to endorse it. If John can't be stand behind it, we can't sell it. So we were selling some socks that were popular mm-hmm. with some profane language on it. Until John came and said, Dad, I don't like this. What are we doing? Didn't fit with us. But the other part is, you know, we'll... We'll talk more about the social part of our endeavor, but you got to deliver on the goods. So we're an e-commerce business. That means we've got to have a great website. We've got to have great selection. We got more than anybody else. The products have to be good. You got to get the product right. Yep. So we got those thirty thousand five star reviews, and the service has to be good. We do same day shipping. If an order comes in today, it's going out today. We do better shipping than Amazon. And Jeff Bezos over on Amazon, he's not putting a thank you note in candy in those no. packages, right? Um, you got to deliver the goods. And then for us, you know, the second pillar is giving back. It's not enough to just sell stuff. You got to engage. So we start by pledging 5% of our earnings to... Special Olympics. Special Olympics. And why the Special Olympics? I am Special Olympics. Yes, you are. Um, But we've gone on to create products that raise awareness about certain issues and raise money for those issues. Mm -hmm. So we told you the first one was the Uh, uh, Down Syndrome Awareness Socks. Down Syndrome Awareness Socks. We called up the National Down Syndrome Society and said, listen, we're going to sell these Down Syndrome socks. We're going to give you money from every pair we sell. And they said, who are you? (laughs) But now we work closely with them. And we have autism-themed socks and uh, cerebral palsy. And we have tribute socks for firefighters and police and EMTs, um, all of which have giving back baked into them. And that's part of the experience that our customers then get. Mm -hmm. They know when they buy from us that they're connecting to this. It's not It's not an old-fashioned paternalism of, well, we'll wait to the end of the year and see if we have if, how much money we made and how much we're willing to write a check for. It's an upfront deal of telling our customers, hey, this is what we're about, this is what we're given to, you're, you're going to be part of that. And it builds a stronger connection. And it's more than just, you know, yes, we publish... Every month on our website, we publish our giving back report because we have to account to our customers. Here's how much we gave each month. We visit and work with our customers. You know, Special Olympics, you're off to the New York State Games this week. Yeah, I'm what, excited. What are you competing in? Snowshoe. Snowshoe. Um, we'll do things with our partners to support what they do. But the most important for us, most important pillar, is crazy and hope. We want to show the world what people with different abilities can do. So we start with John. You have Down syndrome. Yes, I am. 
We don't put John in the back. We don't hide him. You're the face of the business. Yes. And a fine face you are, right? <laughs> you did that. Um, we hire people, so more than half our colleagues have a different ability. But that's not enough. You want to show the world. And, and that works in two ways. We want to reach people with different abilities in their families to inspire them, to encourage them. So that's why we hold the tours. And we have six work groups a week that come in from area high schools and social service agencies. And we talk to parent groups and we talk at these schools to say, we need you and there is a future for you. The other side is talking to other businesses and policy makers. So we've got two TEDx talks on this theme of hiring people with different abilities is not altruism, it's good business. We do speaking engagements and we travel the country doing that. You know, we'll do them online as well now. Speaking to different corporations and conferences, you know, showing what entrepreneurs can do, but also showing what people with different abilities can do. And we do advocacy work. You mentioned in the introduction, we've testified twice before Congress. Mm -hmm. um, we did not have to be subpoenaed there. <laughs> um, we're going to speak at the United Nations for the second time next month, um, addressing this issue of hiring people with different abilities. Um, and you roll all that up and you get John's crazy socks. So for our customers, they know they're going to get great socks. But when they buy from us, they help us. Part of a movement. They help us employ people with different abilities. They help us give back and they're going to be spreading happiness. You know, the best thing we hear from customers are, and we hear this a lot, I put your socks on in the morning and they just make me feel good. What more I love you want? it. That's so, man, that's so good. And, and everything that you guys are just putting, it, it just giving back, um, you know, the <clears throat> outreach that you're doing, the um, lobbying that you're doing, everything. Like, can you roll all that up? That's a lot, but it's like, it's part of your vision. It's part of who you who you are. Yes, you have to believe it and you live it. And but here's a way to think about it. People say, "Oh, you do all that, okay." So you know that business plan we didn't do to start. Well, we've gone and done the research. We've counted. There are exactly one gazillion sock companies. And if all we're doing is selling socks, what do you say? Or is it better than yours? I not smell like yours. They don't smell as bad as yours. They're cheaper uh, than yours. You're lost. Yeah. But we have something else. We have this is your spin. We have this your spin on the product. Right? And and that that can, I don't care if you're making steel. If you're cleaning, you know, sewers, I, you got to know what you're about. You got to know that why, that purpose. And that will make you stand out and it will drive you. It will attract customers. It will attract colleagues and employees. Um, I, yep, absolutely. And that's how you stand out in the market. When this is the purple cow methodology that Seth Godin talks about, right? It's That's exactly what it is. Differentiation is strategy. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, but you can't make it up. You can't. You can't be. Well, we do this, but when times get tough, we throw it overboard. Yeah, that's so great. I'm sure that there's gonna be a lot of the audience there listening that love everything that you're going over, and they're gonna want to buy. Some of John's crazy socks. So I assume the website, I'm going to look on your thing here. Is it just johnscrazysocks.com? Johnscrazysocks.com. Yeah. I want it to be in part of the show notes too. So go support. This is a good movement. And for those of you listening, go support this movement and, and buy some crazy socks and spread some happiness. I love the fact that spreading happiness. That's such a great, great way to look at this. And um, John... Thank you so much for coming on, buddy. Mark, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your guys' story. Um, the last thing I always do is I ask um, if you have three, you have a, 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 an opportunity to sit and speak with three people and learn from them, break bread with them, just 
gather information and, and, and uh, enjoy their company. Anyone in history, anyone alive or deceased, who would those three people be? Well, I would like to sit with that guy, Shakespeare. Oh, that's a good, I've never heard that one. That's a good one. Uh, Shakespeare, Thomas Jefferson, Hmm. I'm either going to go further backwards and say Homer or go forward and say Lincoln. So Lincoln was one of mine. Lincoln's one of mine. I think he's just a phenomenal president. You know, there are... These things become a challenge. I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Bob Dylan fan being short for fanatic mm. um you know i've been I'm listening so since i've been 12 years old and people said to me well wouldn't you like to meet him i say no that would be terrible what would you say you know would i sit down and then say hey bob you know uh, you changed my life like mm, you know yes. so you know <laughs> Um, I don't know, you know, Warren Zevon, Hunter Thompson, uh, the once in my younger days, I found myself drinking shots of wild turkey bourbon out of a chalice with Hunter Thompson. That was a wild night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I don't know. What, what about you, John? Who would you, who would you like to meet and sit with and who would have, you like have to a meet? meal with? Um, who would you invite to dinner? If you could invite anybody to dinner, who would you invite? Lee, uh, Lee Michelle. Lee Michelle? Okay. There we go. There we go. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the Be The Difference podcast, both of you. This has been phenomenal. And and honestly, enlightening. There's This is a lot of great information and for any entrepreneur that's listening. And uh, this, thank you so much for sharing your story and a lot of the strategies that you guys are applying. Well, give a plug, John. Where do they get great socks? I'll, I'll go at John's Crazy Socks.com. John's Crazy Socks.com. Come and join our you know, dance party. Listen to our podcast. What, yes. What's the name of our podcast? A very happy podcast. Spread and happy in this podcast with John and Mark. Half hour of just making you smile and have some fun. Buy some custom socks. We make them for companies. We make them for weddings and bar mitzvahs right um just come and thank you so much greg we appreciate oh, it yes. the pleasure is all mine this was phenomenal like <laughs> I, this has been great so this is one of my favorite podcasts ever i don't think i smiled this much in a podcast ever <laughs> so um you definitely spread happiness today with me yes. uh for all the audience listening do 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 me a favor. Uh, go support. This is a great movement. Go support johnscrazysocks.com. Go listen to the Spreading Happiness podcast. Um, if you learned anything, if you grew, and I know you, if you watched till now, you definitely learned something from both John and Mark. And this is something that that you can share this value with other people that can also learn something. It takes you 60 seconds to rate, review, subscribe, share the content with somebody else that can learn, but it means the world to us because that's how we grow is by word of mouth and organically just one person sharing it with another person. So that's a called a value-based exchange and we're always trying to provide value here in the Be The Difference podcast. But this has been the Be The Difference Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Birch. Until next time, we'll see you.